Hi guys. So today we're going to continue on the topic of the Close Sicilian and we're actually going to take a look at a famous game played in the Close Sicilian by two very strong grandmasters. The white player was actually a world champion as it happens. His name was Mr. Boris Spassky and he was playing another strong, strong grandmaster by the name of Efim Geller. So Geller was also one of the top grandmasters of his time and he tried his best in this game but his best wasn't enough because he was playing against the close Sicilian which isn't really easy to defend against. So here is a great example of how to play the closed Sicilian. So we start with the Sicilian defense and right away Mr. Spassky says okay let's fianchetto that bishop with pawn to g3, right? Black is going for a fianchetto setup himself, trying to play for knight of six and playing it almost as a dragon. So we continue with our own blueprint because we don't really care what they do. We just start with our own plans anyways. And our plans include f4 because later on we're gonna have to pawn storm on the king side. And the question is when to push f4. Well, some people like Spassky in this game push it right away. Nowadays, we actually don't push it right away. We try to play for bishop e3, queen d2, and trade off the bishop first, but both ways are actually totally playable. So let's take a look at how he played it first, okay? So pawn to f4, and the knight comes to f6, trying to bring himself to the queen side, perhaps, in some cases, because in the long run, he's gonna get kicked away by this pawn storm, this pawn avalanche that white is throwing, okay? So... White wants to put the knight on f3 in this case because he's not blocking the f-pawn anymore. It's already been pushed to f4, so we're not worried about that. And the knight can help in pushing the pawn to e5 or later on, as we'll see in this game, going to g5 to attack the black roof. So let's see how that turns out. Black castles and white does the same. Black finally starts to get his own plan and his own pawn storm on the queen side considering that the center is closed, that's why it's called the closed Sicilian, then all the play goes to the flanks. So white will try to go on the king side flank and the basically the f and g files, while black is gonna turn his attention towards the a and the b files, trying to create some pawn weaknesses and somewhere to invade at least some entry squares to disturb and distract white, right? Remember that in the last video we mentioned that the knight can come to g4 and bother our bishop. So the second we see the knight on f f6, right away I would play pawn to h3, making sure that the knight and the bishop have no plans of coming to g4, right? The other idea is that we can now start pushing the g pawn as well, so it helps in many ways. Black says let's start the pawn storm and white says let's stop your pawn storm because now if you go to b4 I'm just gonna trade off those pawns and then my rook can see something and you don't really want your a file locked do you? So black actually wants to take back with the a pawn so that he can invade on the F a file instead of taking back with the c pawn and that's why in the game he actually played a5 getting ready to take back with the a pawn so this pawns can still do some damage right and so white says let's take out our lost pieces so he takes out the bishop to e3 black finally hits white on the queen side but the white pieces just evacuate and this is the evacuation procedure we'll see almost in every close Sicilian. We want to trade off as much pawns and pieces as possible on the queen side so we can focus everyone we have left on the king side. Even if black starts first, their attack is much harder to finish than ours, which is actually pretty quick as we can see in this game. So bishop to b7 because black isn't clear where he should be attacking and what to do with his pieces. Right now that the a file has been opened, the bishop doesn't have the a6 square anymore. Black can't even push any of the pawns now because we fixed them and right away Spassky says, oh, you're not going anywhere, you're not going anywhere, and my rook is gonna evacuate itself somewhere so that the bishop doesn't get any bright ideas of how to attack me. So black starts invading on the a file, which makes sense because they are stronger on the queen side, that's where they should be invading. So we just evacuate and make sure that our pawns protected because that's the base of the whole pawn chain on which our attack depends. Black invades, but we really don't care. That's not much of a picnic table in my eyes that 
that's not a really scary seventh ring because they can't really use it at all in the meantime so we start pushing our own pawns so we can create some problems for that king let's take a look queen to a8 and now the queen's coming now the queen wants to come to h4 and start creating threats with something like f5 bishop h6 and knight g5 and eventually trading out this bishop destroying that knight and taking the pawn on h7 which is kind of what happened in the game the queen is trying to get some counterplay going trying to get the other rook in the game but it's kind of slow so our queen says do you really want to move that rook away are you sure about that because one day i'm gonna come to f7 i'm gonna kick out the knight open the f file and then you may regret that the knight gets his own ideas of coming to a3 and trying to attack our only backward spawn weakness but it's not really that scary so we can just keep doing our thing keep pushing forward keep pressing so the knight keeps going towards a3 and we still don't care so we take on g6 weakening and softening their roof so that our knight can now come here to g5 which is a outpost if we tried knight g5 right away right if we played knight g5 they would kick us away and then maybe even close all the dark squares trying to hold a, uh, a blockade on the dark squares and try to just lock us out that's why we don't play knight g5 right away we first take and then if they take this way then we have knight g5 knight e6 and if they take with the h bond we just come in and the knight can't really be touched they keep on going with their plan but at this point one pawn is not gonna bother us we have to be ready to sacrifice material to turn our attention to where it's most needed so that we already have the idea of checkmate if only we could sacrifice for that knight and that's what spassky is already planning here so black tries to make an escape square for the king getting ready to run with the king off to the queen side where he may be safer but we take anyway so now the bishop can't take back because we have simple queen h7 and then queen f7 mate so the pawn has to take us back but then we invade anyways and now another beautiful sacrifice we keep on breaking that roof so that we can create a pin on the seventh rank so then if the king takes we actually have bishop h6 right away that's why black tries to distract us once again to the queen side where he finally starts taking our pawns it only took him like 20 moves right and so by that time we're already at the king's doorknob already knocking on his door so our knight's under attack but we really don't care it's more important to attack that guy we can sacrifice the knight no problem if it means winning that bishop so then if the bishop takes the knight takes back and that's gonna be really scary for black because who's stopping checkmate not gonna be easy at all the king is gonna be running for a while and he may not arrive successfully so i'm gonna start taking all his pawns something like check check that's one idea and there may be even something better that's why black was really scared and said maybe i'll take the rook first and then i'll force your knight to go back but now our knight's even protecting the only weaknesses we have left so even the queen can't come in and bother us so white is doing great everything is somehow protected the king decides to take back because he couldn't take on h6 as we saw earlier so then now we get rid of his only friend the bishop and start chasing him but the thing is we could take the pawn right away but white realized if only the bishop was better placed then maybe I can checkmate this guy. And he came up with this brilliant idea because right now the bishop is awkward. So he plays g5. He gets ready to take on f6 himself and asks this pawn a question. He says, do you want to take me so that my bishop can actually do something and checkmate you with the help of the queen on e7? Or maybe I can take you and get a queen myself. <laughs> So black is kind of out of good options. He tries to ignore the pawn altogether and trap the bishop on h6. 
but now we just start collecting pawns and now this becomes a passed pawn in itself. After check, we can even take the f5 pawn, opening up the bishop. Notice that the reason why we could push the pawns is because this bishop was protecting our king with no problems. He's like a one one man army in, in himself that in that he could defend the king without the help of the roof he is the roof he is the new roof that replaces the old roof and allows the roof to start going up and attack the black king when i was little i always thought that was really dangerous and i thought how can you just push your old roof like that but it turns out that when the bishop is here our king is more than safe enough because also their pieces are nowhere near us so this bishop can hold the king no problem while their king is now running running for his life and he's not gonna run for very long because black actually resigned here if the king was to go away somewhere then we'd probably just trade everyone off and say wait a second aren't those pawns gonna be queens and the answer is yes they are there is no way that the rook can stop both pawns with the help of the bishop as well and so these pawns will just decide the game so if the attack doesn't get the king then the pawns that keep on storming will one day create enough problems to make them reside so hopefully you like this game which shows a lot of the close sicilian ideas including pushing those f pawns g pawns trading off that bishop and trying to get rid of him at any cost and evacuation of the queen side basically telling everybody to come from the left to the right.